Hi everyone, welcome to the Simple Art at Home Summer Camp Art Series with me, Laura Houston. Get your art supplies ready because together we will get creative, learn about art, and have some fun along the way. I'll meet you at the art table. Okay, everybody, this is the intermediate lesson and it's called Landscape with Torn Paper and today we're working on part one. For part one, you're going to need three sheets of white paper. You'll want um, colors similar to these, some black, brown, some type of lighter brown. If you don't have a lighter brown, um, that's okay. You can just color very lightly uh, with the dark brown crayon. Uh, you'll want, to, hopefully you have two shades of green, like a dark green and a light green. Blue is optional. Um, yellow, you'll want some yellow, and then you'll possibly want, um, oh, this is an even darker green. I, I tried to get all my three greens that I could, but um, this is what you'll need, and maybe a pencil to sketch with. Okay, so since we have um, all of these papers. Oh, and, and if you have watercolors, that would be great, but it's not um, mandatory. Also, if you don't have this, this peachy light color, orange would work too. Okay, so what I usually do is um, we're going to start with one paper, and what I usually do is I put the other papers on the ground because my desk isn't big enough to set things aside, and I don't want things getting wet with the watercolor paper. So um, if you have some space on the floor behind you or uh, next to you, just gently set your papers down. Um, why don't we start, I forgot to tell you this the last time, but start by putting your name uh, on the back. I'm just going to write Mrs. Houston. You write your name on the back because you know this is a two-part project that we're going to come back to. All right, so for the background, this is what you're going to be gluing your torn paper on. We're going to just color or paint some blue on the top part and some brown on the bottom part. And um, the blue is going to represent some sky. And I usually do um, horizontal strokes. So I'm just going to... And when you're working with watercolors, don't put too, too much water because this is not true watercolor paper. Usually watercolor paper is much thicker and sturdier. Um, this could rip, so you just have to kind of find the right combination of water mixed with paint to make this work. And again, most of this will be covered uh, because we're gonna be gluing torn paper over it, but some of it won't be. Covered. And it's okay if you leave some white streaks because that those white streaks could be like, you know, like the little cirrus clouds that are way up there in the sky. So I'm, I'm taking the blue almost halfway down the paper. Almost halfway. There's no exact um, point. And then um, for the bottom part, my brown is so, always comes out very, um, thick and dark so let's see the bottom part will be brown and again this doesn't have to be perfect we're just adding some color so that it's just not pure white if there's space be behind your torn paper it just doesn't look white so it'll look like earth or dirt down here if there's any little spaces showing through. Most of this, as I said, will get covered. Okay. There's a lot of prep. Today is all prep. We're not gonna tear paper until part two. But you'll see why. Okay, that's about it. See how it's not perfect? 
um, but it doesn't need to be. And especially, you know, when you're dealing with a landscape. So I have my name on my paper. I'm going to very gently pick this up and set it on the carpet next to my desk. And we'll come back to it later. Okay, and now go ahead and get another piece of white paper. Okay, and uh, we're going to work on um, what's going to be um, grassy hills. But first we're gonna fold the paper. So fold the paper in half like this and then fold it in half again. And these fold lines are going to help us uh, kind of divide the paper up. So you can really use any color you want. I'm just going to use brown. And we're going to draw, like if you can see this as a rectangle here at the bottom, you're gonna draw a line that goes from corner to corner. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna be tearing this paper. So in each section, do the same thing. Draw a line from corner to corner. From corner to corner. And one more. So there's four sections. Does not have to be perfect. Okay. And we're going to start, let's start at the top. I'm going to take my lightest crayon, my yellow, and we're just going to make some lines and these um, are going to be, uh, they're going to just represent little bits of grass. And you don't want to, this paper should be able to be used upside down either way. So just make simple little, you know, kind of crooked lines. That's all we're going to do right there. We'll add some paint. So if you're not painting, you'll want to fill this in with mostly yellow and a little bit of green. Okay. And in the next section, I'm going to mix some brown with green here. So I'll do some like brown pieces that could represent grass. We're just adding a little texture because it will show through the paint. So I'm, I'm thinking of this whole rectangle here. I'm just adding some brown. And we can also add some green. Does not have to be perfect because we're gonna be tearing this paper in big sections. But the texture will just add interest. And then the next section I'm going to do with just green. And the reason I'm changing the color a little bit is because um, these are going to become like hills. They're going to be vertical hills that are layered that show depth. And it'll be more interesting if the color changes. And then the last one, I will use just some dark green and light green mixed together. And it's just, these are just little suggestions that there's grass or weeds growing on the hills. So I'm just mixing some dark green and some light green. That's about it. And then I'm gonna paint. And if you are not using watercolor paints, you can just color now, sort of like the same idea that I'm doing with paint. So I'm gonna start at the top. And um, up here at the top, I will start with mostly yellow, but I'm gonna add in a little bit of green. So we're just gonna fill in this whole rectangle up here. You know, we divided it into some, you know, triangles, but just paint that whole top rectangle. And again, this paper will be torn into long, like triangular sections. 
So it does not have to be perfect. And here's where I'm gonna add in a little bit of green to this. So if you're using crayons, you'll want this top section up here, I'll call it section number one, to be green and yellow. Okay. And then this next section down here, I'm gonna continue with the green, but I'm gonna add some brown into it because I want it to be darker. I want some contrast between these landscape um, hills that I will be tearing and gluing onto my landscape. So I'm adding green here. I'm also gonna mix in some brown. So if you're using crayons or colored pencils, you can mix in green and brown together. And there you can see some of the brown. Because I want it to look different than that top section. I don't want them to all look the same. Remember, this does not have to be exact. See that? Just kind of added some brown in there. Looks like some dirt and grass. The next section is all just going to be green. That's how I'm gonna make it different from the green and brown. If I had all the hills you know, the grassy hills, the same color, that you wouldn't be able to see that one is in front of the other very much, but when we change the color a little bit, we'll be able to show one in front of the other. And notice I'm just going through this rather quickly. Okay, and then this last section down here, oops, let me just fill in that. We don't want white showing through. The last section, I'm just gonna make it brown. And the little blades of grass, the little green and, and light green blades of grass will show through. So we still get the idea that it's like a grassy dirt mixture, like a hill with grass and dirt. Okay. Notice I'm not spending, you know, too, too long on this. We're still going to have another part to do today for part one. We're going to be outlining some mountains. Okay, I just want to make sure that you know, most of the white is co is covered. Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush. So what we have is we have four main sections here. I'll turn it sideways so that you can see them all. So this section over here is like green and yellow. This one's green and brown. This one's all green and this is all brown. Okay, and go ahead and find a safe place on the carpet um, if you can gently, if, if your paper's not too wet, maybe you can write your name on the back of it. Um, or if you need to let it dry for five minutes and then flip it over and write your name, that's, it's important to remember to write your name. So I'm going to set this on the carpet because I know this is drying and I'm going to get my third sheet of paper. This is the last one that we're prepping for today, <laughs> but there's some detail work here. Okay. All right, so on this paper, I'm gonna divide it into thirds, okay? Um, I'm gonna draw like a line here and a line here. It does not have to be perfect, it's just kind of the idea. So we're gonna have one section over here. I'm just gonna kind of section that off and then we'll do another section right here. Okay, and then um, this section over here, uh, what you're gonna do is we're gonna have a sun 
And this is all going to be torn later, okay? And I'm just gonna take my yellow crayon and maybe make some curved lines to add texture. If, if you're not using watercolor paints, you'll wanna fill this all in with yellow, okay? But I'll be painting this yellow. I like adding paint over the top of crayon. Okay. And then down here, another part that we're gonna be tearing, we're gonna be tearing out a like a body of water. So it's gonna seem strange, but it'll make sense later. I'm just gonna do kind of like a curve like this. Okay, it's gonna be like a lake. And if we want to, I don't know how much this will show up. Sometimes my crayon shows up better, but I was just gonna do some kind of some lines like this to suggest water. If you wanna do that. Okay, and then if you're not painting, you, you'll wanna kind of color that in blue. So here we're going to um, draw some mountains, but um, listen carefully. So we're going to have, let me, I can show, use my ruler to kind of show you. Uh, we're gonna have one section of mountains up here, and then we're gonna draw another line like down here, okay? So you're gonna have thirds this way, okay, of three sections. So maybe watch me draw first and then you can draw, okay? So, and this does not have to be exact, but we'll do, I'm not even really, I'm not putting my crayon against the ruler, I'm just using it there. Okay, so there's one, but you stop here. Don't go into the sun area that you drew. And then we'll do one more section right here. Okay. Uh, okay, so now... Oh, I, I need to add one more little section down here. I kind of told you wrong, but it's still going to work out. So we need, we're gonna have two big mountains up here, and then we're gonna have smaller mountains down here. So that's no problem. We can still, I can divide this right here. So just do a line here and maybe a line here. We'll make it work, okay. So for the two big mountains, we're gonna have, we're gonna make a triangle, okay. So it's gonna go like up here to down there. So the big thing that we want is we want two mountains to stand out as being um, bigger than the rest. And then we're going to be making some smaller mountains. That So just go ahead and, and again, we're gonna be tearing these. They're gonna be in our landscape. And so these will make these smaller too. They don't need to be as big. It's gonna be perfect, okay. So two on top, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So you have a total of eight mountains, okay? Now, uh, we're going to show uh, that if the sunlight, you know, we've, we've done this before with our art projects, if the sunlight is shining on one section, um, one side of the mountain is gonna be lighter, and my husband, Jeff reminded me that Bob Ross would always explain when you're drawing mountains, you shade one side, of the, one side of the mountain lighter and one side of the mountain darker. So right here at the top, I know I'm taking my black crayon. We're gonna do kind of like a jagged line going down, but jagged, okay? And then we're just gonna kind of thicken it on one side over here and See how I'm kind of taking that? And, and the line is, is going down. The shading is going in the same angle as the side of the mountain, like that. And then I'm gonna take my brown and add a little more shading, okay? And, and I'm gonna add watercolor on top of this. So if you're not adding watercolor, you're gonna to want to fill this in with crayon. And this is where on the left side, 
Um, I'm going to use a lighter color. I have a peach. If you orange would work fine as well, but you're going to want to color over here. And then I'm also going to add in a little bit of yellow only kind of like over here because that's going to show the sun reflecting. And this is, remember, we're going to be tearing these mountains out. So um, this is a pattern that we're going to repeat on all of these mountains. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to go through and kind of do this. To make it jaggedy like that and the black is going to add some interesting contrast and I'll add some brown I'm going to add my my lighter color over here and a little bit of yellow just on the side where the sun would be shining on it. And um, just I'll just to kind of show you if you're coloring with crayons. You're going to have one side brown with that black part in the middle. And then on this side, I'm also going to mix in a little bit of brown over here, but I'm going to go lighter as I get to the center. So it kind of even stays a little bit paper color there. Like I'll do a little bit of brown down here, but that's basically you're going to want. And you know what? Right now I remembered I'm going to go over my line in case I tear. I'll have a little extra brown there. Like when I do tear, if it doesn't tear perfectly, I'll have a little extra brown. So that's how I'm gonna fill these in and paint them like this. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through and um, finish coloring them first, and then I'll paint. So the smaller ones, it's the same idea. Kind of have this, kind of shows like the edge of the mountain. shouldn't be perfectly straight because it's just like the the face they call that the you know the face of the mountain where it's rocky and I'm, I'm filling in these lines with in the angle, that down angle. Okay, and then I'm gonna add some brown. If you're painting with the watercolors, you don't have to have too much, add too much brown in there. And I'm going to add the peach color, or if you have a soft orange, you can use on the other side of your mountain. And then don't forget the yellow highlight from the sun on the left side. Yellow here, the highlight. Yeah, 
how fast and easy that is. Okay. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint, before I get my water too dirty, I'm gonna paint my yellow sun. And if you're using crayons, just color it in. And then I'm gonna paint this body of water with some blue. The crayon has a wax in it and it prevents the paint from adhering to the paper. And so that's why sometimes the wax will show through. Sometimes it works better than others. Uh, see, you can kind of see it. There's a little texture. I think it leaves an interesting Okay, now I'm gonna just paint my mountains. The darkest part will be here. And then I'll just drag that brown color out. I'm gonna go over my line a little bit just because when I tear it, okay, and then I'm gonna start over here just with some soft brown. leave it more white towards the center. Okay. I'm just going to keep doing that with all these with all these mountains. And then when we work on part 2 together, we will tear and glue our landscape together. Remember to find the right balance of water and paint. It's okay if it goes over because, you know, we'll be, like I said, we'll be tearing this paper. there. Three more mountains to go. We've got four small mountains, two mediums, and two large. The black should still show through. It'll work its way through here. Get some of that off my brush. It's okay, that one came out dark. That's actually cool looking. It could be shaded more. I'll probably put it farthest away from the sun on my landscape. Okay, so today for part one, we prepared our mountains. We prepared our grasses, our grassy hills, all these sections here. And we prepared this background. Okay, make sure you have your name on the back of everything uh, so that it, you don't lose it 
before we see each other again for part two of art. So this is the end of part one. I'll see you for part two. Okay, we're back for the intermediate lesson called Landscape with Torn Paper, and this is part two. So this is what we made in part one. So you should have a sheet with mountains and a sun and a sideways body of water. And you should have uh, this full sheet with all the grassy hills. And then you should also have the background paper that we will be gluing on. So today you're going to need glue. And I think that's it. We're just going to be tearing and gluing today. All right. So I'm going to set my background paper aside on the floor, on the carpet. And we're going to start with um, all these um, sections here. So th these will be little hills. So. Um, we're going to tear from, like, we're going to kind of follow our line. And it doesn't have to be a sharp triangle. Oops, that was just my glue. And it doesn't have to be perfect because with tear art, it's not supposed to be perfect. And I'm just trying to follow my main line, more or less. I'm going down to my corner. And it's great if it, you know, kind of gets curved on top to look like a grassy hill, but it doesn't have to. So now I'm going to kind of turn my paper again. This part uh, would be more or less um, straight. There. So these were the two, let me just show you. These were the two pieces. They went like this and I just tore them. Okay. So when we glue them, they'll be on the paper. Oh, I think I will want to tear. Let's see, well, let's see. We can work with them more. Okay, so I'm just gonna take all of these and start separating them. And I, I'm gonna want to tear, I don't want that, that brown line showing. I'm gonna tear it off a little bit. There we go. It even looks good if there's white paper that's there at the top because then it like, helps to separate. There. Okay. Uh, we're gonna make a big mess today, so um, please be sure to help clean up at the end. Okay, there's this one. Okay. 
I'm gonna, you can control the tear. If you're going too fast, then you can't control it as much, but you can kind of control the tear. I'm leaving the, the edge straight. This one. And I'm not too worried that there's brown on this because I think it looks interesting, but I don't want my brown crayon to show up. So I'm gonna tear off. We don't want the lines on there, so try to try to tear off the lines. And again, if you're making a mess, you know, try to keep that mess contained, or at least be a really good. You're all going to have to be good helpers to help your teacher clean up everything at the end. And I have this section too, this last part. It's okay if they don't all look the same. You know, they're not supposed to. These are just supposed to be natural um, hills that are gonna go from side to side. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna set these aside. Please make sure you keep track of yours, that they don't get mixed with the person sitting next to you. Um, so, let's see. I'm gonna set these aside, okay. Now, keep, now take out the, the mountains, okay? And let's, let's tear the sun and the body of water, okay? And again, I don't want that brown line to show, so I'm gonna tear inside of that line. See how I'm inside the line? I'm trying to stay inside. You can kind of, you know, re-tear if you need to. And if you need to turn your paper in another direction and tear it, you can do that too. Now, you're gonna keep uh, the, these two edges a right angle because uh, it'll go in the corner of your paper. And uh, I'm gonna also tear out um, this body of water right now. And remember, you don't have to tear it perfectly. See that? And if I decide I want it thinner, like once I go to put it on my paper, I can make it uh, a little bit thinner. I might want it and tear a little bit off of that. There, to make it a little thinner. Okay, I'm gonna set my mountains aside for a moment. And I wanna glue my sun in the top corner. Don't lose all your pieces, okay? All right, so let me get my paper that was on the carpet, it's right here. So I'm gonna start by gluing the sun up here. And this is where you can look at it and decide if you want it a little bit smaller. I'm okay with this size right here. So I'm gonna take my glue. Remember, you glue on the back of the piece that you've torn. And if you don't want the edges peeling up, get the glue close to the edge. Okay, so you just match up that 90 degree angle in the corner of your paper. And then you have a sun, okay? And now I'm going to tear out, so we have um, two big mountains. Let's work with the two big mountains first. So I'm just going to, um, actually tear them apart from um, the rest of the mountains. I'm just going straight across here. Okay. 
Now I can, um, I'm just gonna work with these two mountains first. I'm gonna set my other mountain paper aside. Choose one, you know, your favorite one to start with, and that one's gonna go in um, the center. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna choose this one. Let me tear this apart here. We have our two mountains, okay. So this one is gonna go in the center. So I'm just tearing it. Remember, you don't want that line that you drew to go there. To, I mean, to be visible. Okay. You know, I'm gonna see if my other one tears better because this one tore pretty like in a narrow way, but that's okay. I'm gonna see if the other one, if I like the way the other big mountain looks. This is not a perfect, this is not a perfect thing because we're not using scissors and it's not supposed to be perfect. It's gonna have a really interesting look when we're done, a layered look. Let me tear this one and see which one I like better. And remember the, the light side of the mountain will always face the sun. Let me try this one. Trying to get the brown line off. Okay, so I'm gonna decide which mountain I like better. Actually, they're both fine. They're both fine. I'm gonna just stick with the first one and it's gonna go in the center of the paper. like more, like closer to the top. Like it's gonna sit on that, that top part there. Okay. So put your glue on it. Okay, so in the center, but kind of up above the center a little bit. So the, look where the peak, the tippy top is, kind of close to the top. And then I'm going to take my other large mountain and he's going to go like over and down. See how I put it down a little bit right there? Down, so to the left, but down a little bit so it's not lined up. You don't want them in a straight line like that. You want to overlap. We're going to be overlapping to show depth. So he's overlapping and down. Okay, so that's the most important part. We have the first two, and then I'm going to use the, one of the small ones. And I'll use this one right here, and he's going to go over here on the left. And it'll start to, it'll start to make sense to you once we get more mountains on. So I'm just carefully tearing, and it's okay if, um, you might not even need all of the mountains. Let's see how it comes out. It's always better to make more. I'm gonna have to tear a little extra here. a little bit off that top. Okay, so this one, I'm gonna put like over here, down, maybe over here. So it's overlapping and it's also in front. Although, okay. Okay, so again, overlap and in front. Now you see why the yellow makes sense? The sun is shining on the side. Okay, and then, um, okay. So the next one, I will put, I think it's easier to just kind of tear them apart first.
Now you know how to do tear art if you've never done tear art before. Do one more here. about right here, like in front. So that's four. Okay, so there's a smaller one in front. And then I'm gonna keep going. Do maybe one of the larger ones right here. Let me first separate it. to add more yellow to this because I tore off some of the yellow. Okay. Maybe not though. Okay, so this one will be right about, I'm going to put it right about here. So now you're starting to see the layering of the mountains. You can see how it's starting to take effect. It's going to look even better when we put the grassy hills down below. Okay, so this one will go about right here. Okay, and then I'm going to put one more next to him, which is at the same, pretty much at the same level. Let's see. So after this, I still have, I still have two mountains off to the side, plus this one. To be experts at tearing paper by the time we're done with this project. It's not easy. I, I, I can tell you. Pretty soon we're going to add our lake, our body of water, at the base of some of the mountains here. Okay, so then this one is going to go even with this, but about right here. Okay, let me just need to clear off some of this torn paper. I'm making a mess and it's just one of me. I can't imagine what your classroom looks like. Okay, but this project will be worth it. It's a lot of work, but in the end, it's gonna be beautiful. Okay. So then we have this one right here. Okay, now I'm gonna get the body of water and I'm going to experiment with this a little bit because it's going to go somewhere around here, somewhere around here. And then the other mountain, I'm going to put another, so I'm just, I'm not going to glue it yet. I'm going to get the other mountain. Okay. Put it over in front of the water. Actually, I don't think I'm going to use the last mountain. We might have one extra, but you can use it if you want to. Okay, now let's see how this looks. If I add another mountain here, I'm going to tear off that edge. It makes it look like there's this water, this lake, but make sure the lake is perfectly horizontal. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue my lake on. Right about, it's overlapping. See how it's covering the bottom of those mountains right there? And then I'm going to add another mountain on top of it or in front of it to show depth. 
Oh yeah, this one is gonna go right about here and I'm gonna cut off. Oh yeah, I might use scissors. You know what, I think I wanna show some of the water coming in front of the mountain. Maybe I'll put it a little higher. Okay, there. Okay, and I'm just gonna use my scissors to trim that extra bit off, or you can tear it. Actually, I think you should use scissors later. There. And that shows that the water's going back there and around, like it's going around the mountain. All right, so now um, I do have one extra mountain that I'm not going to use. Okay, so now I have all these pieces. All right, and I want to put, I'm gonna start with um, some brown. Oh, I'm gonna start up. So we're gonna build it from up here. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay, we might not use all the, the green grass. I'm just gonna kind of lay it here, see how it looks. I don't wanna, I do wanna cover, you know, the bottom of the mountains there. And I might have to trim, I might need to tear a little bit more. Okay, so I don't wanna cover up all of this. Okay. The tricky part is, there. The tricky part is <laughs> that we're kind of building it backwards, so not from the ground up, but from the top down. And if you need to tear it to adjust it, you can. So here I'm covering up some at the base of the mountains. And again, we might not use all of our, we might not use all of our grass. So what I'm gonna do here, you can, you can trim it after. It might be easier to trim after, or it's up to you, kind of experiment how you want it to look. Okay, so we're just layering, we're layering in the, the grass that we painted. And even if you think that it's not quite right, I'm sure it's gonna be great. Let's see. There we go. So the straight edge down here, this will get covered up. I can tear this a little bit because I don't want a total straight edge right in the middle. Okay. And then I'm gonna take this one We'll layer another piece here. This is, yeah, that's gonna be gorgeous. This is one of those pieces where up close, it might not uh, make sense, but when you hold it away from your eyes, it's gonna be amazing. Okay, so this one will go about right here. We can trim the edges with scissors, like I said, afterwards. You see why we want a different color uh, ground. Okay, and then we can use something like this right here in front. I'm just kind of laying it down to figure out which where exactly I want it. I might trim some of this down a little bit more right here. There. I like how that looks. There we 
go. That's just layer upon layer upon layer. Let me put this a little bit higher. There. Okay. And then I think now I'll move on to more. Oh, I can do this lighter color here. This is pretty right here. Like I said, we'll trim the edges with scissors. And I'm at the end of my glue stick, but I have more. We're almost done. Mine's going all off the end of the paper, but don't worry. We can just do this. I can see right where it where it's overlapping and just cut it just like that. Magic. Okay, and then it looks like I might be able to finish this with one last piece. Um, this one might go perfectly right here. Okay, so let me just see how this is going to look. Yep, I think that's going to be perfect right there. I really like the body of water that we put in there. That looks like a beautiful mountain scene with a with a lake. I bet like you could go fishing in that lake right there. My gosh, this was a this was a hard project, but I I like this because no matter how you do it, it's still going to read as if it's mountains and sure and a lake and a sun okay we can put one more maybe a little piece oh yeah a little piece down at the bottom perhaps oh just to add a little bit okay if you want to keep I'm going to put one more piece right there. And it, it, it's supposed to have little scraps everywhere. This is what tear art is. This art has a lot of texture. Again, and I'll cut off extra. I think that looks nice right there. Okay. There we go. Wow. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Let me just clean it up. A little bit. I'm going to turn it over and kind of cut off the extra without cutting the main um, piece that I started with, the, the one white rectangle. And I can cut here as well. Looks like there's a little bit. Okay, wow. This is. This is a beautiful, beautiful piece of art. It was a lot of work, um, but I'm gonna just hold it up a little bit. Okay, so, you know, what we did here was we showed, we showed depth, there's layers, and we have mountains off in the distance with a beautiful sun. Uh, this was the end of part two. I hope you enjoyed this tear art. It was a challenge. But at the same time, I think that it turned out beautifully. This is one that um, you might want to frame. Uh, but thank you for sticking with me, and um, I will see you next time. Bye-bye. See you next time.